Would you please welcome Jean-Pierre Heim, Tony, Tony, I'm so sorry, I can't, rem I can't pronounce the last name. There we go, um, to, to the stage. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Julie. Here we're going to, pre I'm going to present you tonight, today, a project that is uh, 500 meters from here. It's going to be the first renovated luxury building in Piraeus. Piraeus in Greece is the most famous harbor and even one of the most famous harbor for the Silk Road. You know that, uh, you know, uh, Costco, they, inv they invest here 600 million uh, euro, 42 kilometers of, of land around Piraeus. And uh, it's going to be, uh, it is now one of the most important Silk Road harbor in the world. Uh, the mayor of Piraeus asked me many years ago to develop a tower of Piraeus. And it took about 10 years till they have find out with Lambda, uh, uh, which is an important, uh, one of the most important uh, construction company in, uh, in Greece to develop it. One of the investor in Piraeus is uh, now became a very good friend of mine and they purchased 40 buildings in Piraeus. 40 buildings in Piraeus is a major investment. And they asked me to design one of the most interesting one in Marina Zia. So from an old scratch building that was running down since 20 years ago, we have revamped it and uh, we have designed it. So if you can just put the, the video. Everything in this building is designed according to symbols. We are living in the, a very symbolic city, Athens. And the symbol of Athens is the olive tree, which is the symbols of Athena, gods of war and power. The olive tree is a very important element into Greek culture, and of course, it's the oil of Greece. It's the olive. So this is the building. You can see it through the window. It's running down completely, so I put it as a, a kind of shelter, a kind of shield that will protect the sun from the environment and will project leaves of a building all over the top floor. And in order to create a very strong image, I create on top of a building a silver sculpture olive tree that will reflect also the sun, the sunshine, the sunrise. In, at, in the evening, it's going to be all orange like fire and it will be on top of the building. All the, the apartments will be very luxury. As a matter of fact, the penthouse has just been sold for 3.5 million euro, which is for Piraeus, you know, a record. This will be the, uh, the atmosphere from the, uh, the top, and it's been renovated now. It's going to be uh, delivered in December. For Piraeus, it will be a landmark, a landmark because from the bedroom there, you can see everything. And maybe one day we can do the FTE where uh, you see Julie, soon on top of a terrace. There will be about uh, 12 apartments and they will overlook the, the harbor and Marina Zia. All the apartments will be furnished and it will be also rental for events, not only for, for living. Now you have seen, I'm sure yesterday when you have walked around and when you went around uh, the Hellenicon area, you have seen a lot of new buildings and you can see that Athens is going to reshape and to be revamping soon. In the next few years you will see a very major development in Athens and uh, I think a lot of foreigners coming from all over the world are investing now and that's why the real estate in Glifada and uh, Uliagmeni is absolutely booming. You can reach prices like Paris. Marine Eco Marina, boating is the essence of Greece also. You can see all around, all those little boats going around. And the tourism in summer is going towards Marina. 
the people, a lot of people come here and rent boats. They don't, they don't have the facilities. So I have decided, and I decided this with my partner, Tony Van Vakidis, to design a circuit of Eco Marina. And this morning we had here the governor of the North Aegean Sea, and I'm very good friend also for the, with the governor of the Cyclades. And we are putting together a plan to develop five or six marina in Greece that will be Focus on Eco Marina. I am member of the Monaco Yacht Club, and uh, the Monaco Yacht Club, I have affiliated it, and I did a sistership with a yacht club, the largest in Asia that have developed in Shanghai. Shanghai is much larger than Mon Monaco Yacht Club, so I decided to put the sistership with Albert of Monaco in Monaco Yacht Club in order to create a synergy with yachts. You can put down the, uh, the Eco Marina now. And uh, by putting energy with yachting, I think we are touching the essence of Greece. And we want to develop a kind of a stage between islands where people can rent boat and feel safely with administration and everything. You can see all the island in Greece. And when you go boating, it's very safe to have security, to have management, to have as, uh, also uh, uh, everything around sustainability, mobility, electric mobility, it will be done for future boating and everything. So by creating new marina, I think I will create a destination for maritime tourism and also boating and will have a very, very powerful effect on Greece because people will feel at least secure to rent boats. So Tony, if you want to say something about uh, Eco Marina, Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tony Vavakidi. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, North Star Yachting. We basically build um, and uh, sell yachts, uh, also exploit them in chartering. Uh, we have been in this journey for uh, more than 30 years, 35 years to be exact. And the problem and the catchy phrase always in Greece, uh, it was repeated over and over that Greece is the perfect um, uh, chartering arena, but we have no marinas. And people needed to refuge uh, in, uh, in bays to do uh, what we say um, uh, chimatera, meaning you know um, uh, landline on the rocks and stuff like that, which is good and natural. But at the end of the day, they want to go there on a safe haven and use the facilities of the islands and return some money to the economy as well. Because what good does it make if you have all these thousands of yachts going around and at the end of the day um, uh, you don't return some of the income to, to the land? So Jean Pierre came up with this idea that. In, in the first instance, I thought that this was a no-go because it's practically, you know, covering Corfus Bay. But then when you run the, the situation and you see how really sustainable it is because it doesn't touch at all the beach, it has all these uh, under the breakwater tunnels, so the fresh water circulates basically, and only the outer part of the marina is used as a marina. It still maintains the character as a kite surfing spot. We have run simulations to to allow us to believe that there will not be any serious disturbance of the wind patterns. So uh, if this thing goes ahead, it will be one of these projects that will change the total philosophy about marina confrontation, which is stigmatic again, like we have been discussing since morning. It's very important also to host historical boats. Historical boats are called a kaiki, and they have a lot of them. Now the government destroy them and give money and incentive to people destroying them because they are supposed to be fishing boats. So we want to gather sales boats, historical boats, and the new eco-marine boats with electric and also hydrogen in the future. This was for this uh, project. We want to develop this in five or six islands. We're already working with two places like uh, Marathon and also Astipalea. Astipalea is an island where sustainability is the most important thing for the island. We already have Volkswagen as an investor for electric car, so we want the mayor call us in order to design uh, an eco marina there. Now, sustainability. Sustainability is a very fashionable, uh, fashionable word and means everything and nothing. But if we focus on it, and if we see how our civilization and how we live every day, we live all the time thinking about saving money, saving energy, uh, electric mobility, and also garbage renewal. We want to also to, to have a good uh, infrastructure system, uh, desalinating water. This is all of this combined in Eco Marina. 
So in order and for the essence of doing all of that, we have created a luxury boat. This boat will be the first electric luxury boat in Manhattan. It will be a hotel. It will be the first time that it will have a floating hotel in Manhattan. This hotel will have 20 luxury suites aboard, will have electric mobility, will have a three-star chef aboard, and will host, I will say, it's not fashionable to say that, but the happy few. We want people to recognize this boat as Le Cheval Blanc, as Amman Resort, as also maybe uh, another brand that we're looking for with, a, with sustainability and great luxury. So this boat has been approved by the city of New York, which is a great accomplishment. Now we are facing the Coast Guard approval in Washington, D.C. This boat is going to go through it because we find the naval architects of the Circle Lines in New York, but are all the boats going around New York, and this boat will be the first one like a white horse going around New York where you can enjoy shopping, uh, doing business, and also family, and also corporate events. So we're going to see the boat, and after we have a lot of things to talk about this. Thank you. The boat will be 85 meters long. Why 85? Because it's the longest distance we can use on the Hudson River and to go also in uh, all around Manhattan. It has another constraint, it's the height. The height will be 7.4 meters because we have to go under the bridges. And this boat is going to be so luxury that you will have private events, you will have a private chef, a cuisine, two very huge luxury suites of 65 square meter and about uh, 18 of them of 45 square meter. And you can see on the top floor we will have a, a sunroof, a solar panels, and inside we can have a lot of reception, events, and a party. The boat will be, host only 150 people. It's the maximum allowed for New York. And in the boat you will have convertible restaurants and uh, you will have also events and uh, you can see all kind of movies in private entertainment room, boardroom, conference room. Um, I have to say also that uh, you can see in the background some pictures. Uh, all the, the old transatlantic boats brought fashion of France in America, and we are doing this boat with a Comité Colbert, which is um, the most important luxury brands in France, and we will have in the restaurants uh, Baccarat, Lalique, Bernardo for the silverware and everything. We will have also uh, the best material, and everything will be done with the French luxury manufacturers. And uh, just to clarify, the 150 persons is for. Uh just day capacity, day visit. The sleeping guests will only be 20 keys, as we say, so a maximum of 40 people that are served by the equal one-to-one -one number of crew. So you have one crew member per guest, which is the industry standard for the highest and uh, um, yachts that are chartered out. Uh, So I'm going to tell you a few words about that without trying to, to take too much of your energy, especially at this time of day. If you can switch, please, to the PPT. Okay, good. Um, so um, this is um, 
obviously um, a concept that's been brewing at the, this famous architect's uh, uh, mind for many, many uh, years now. And um, just a couple of years ago, he approached me and we said, I have this vision, this idea, let's try and see if it's feasible and to make something out of it because there is a void in that market to do that. Uh, myself, I've been building and selling yachts all my life and I'm an economist by study. So I wanted to run that through a serious vetting and the filter to see well, it's there. And as we were exploring all this uh, uh, very exciting uh, project together, I have checked all the marks, and that's why we are all here, you know, consuming our uh, most valuable resource, which is time, yours mostly, and uh, discussing about that. So, um, the reality is a harsh reality of numbers. Uh, either way we want to look at it, you know, it all comes to numbers, and as Vasily will agree, you know, this is very nice pictures, but tell me how, how this thing will fly. So, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that I will speak about numbers, but I'm not going to make it one of these wake me up when it's over presentations. That's my intention. Um, so, from a technological and economical viewpoint, it's easy to do that. It's not so difficult because every time we're opening the next chapter, the numbers smile, smile at us and at me. At every cape that we had to cross, like we say in yachting and in boating, the next bay was more tranquil water rather than the other way around. Uh, we had to uh, confront, you know, the big, big dream tasks like the electrical character of this boat. How can you go electric on such a grand magnitude, so many uh, kilowatts, uh, close to one megawatt of power? But then we realized that the battery capacitors are there, and if you aid them with, with very nice uh, um, uh, backup uh, storing units and uh, auxiliary services, we can do it. I will not, of course, go into technical uh, detail, but uh, the technology is there, and it has been proven to be there for mostly like 18, 19 months that we have been studying and traveling throughout Europe to see what we're building and where and who. Um, second obstacle, which to my understanding was even bigger, was the licensing obstacle, what uh, Jean-Pierre said earlier. Most of the times, uh, uh, the people with the... Uh, ugly clothes, as we call them, the engineers, uh, as compared to the suits, you know, they lose the battle because the suits go there and they give you a number of things that you cannot go through, huge obstacles, a bureaucracy, red tape that you cannot imagine, especially in Europe. So this was our next challenge. And then the third number for me as an economist, I say, okay, uh, is it feasible, financially uh, feasible? And it, is it even exciting? Because feasible is one thing, okay, to just be able to go on plane at 17, 18 knots as the yachters know, it's not good enough. You need to go 30 knots if you are into high-speed cruising. So I started to run all these numbers into my great delight. After months and months of hard work, we have arrived there. We have arrived at the point of trademarking and licensing the yacht. And this in itself, believe me, it's like having run a marathon between, between all of us. Um, Jean-Pierre Haim and his team of designers and architects have been working day and night. Um, Paul Ben Sabat, who is our third partner in Miami, he lives there and he was pulling uh, administrative strings. And myself as well, as, uh, uh, with my team behind that, doing the marketing and the, and the numbers of it. Um, we had to dance uh, through a lot of uh, creases of this uh, final uh, journey. What I can just tell you, pinpoint out, is that uh, the materials are there. Uh, light, uh, lightweight um, aluminum alloys are there. They, they have a very low specific gravity, so this gives a big uh, helping hand to the battery capacitors on a, on a, on a terms of capacitor to weight ratio. Then um, we, I started to evaluate uh, propelling solutions. Uh, you have a boat there, you need to do go around. Of course, the main character maybe we, we call it you know, a yacht hotel, which it is, but people don't want to stay there because otherwise they stay at Waldorf Astoria. So you need to be able to do that and to take them there when they want to. So we need to find the best, the best way to propel it. And uh, what is the best cybernetically controlled system as we know it? It's nature. And nature goes very back to the humpback whale. And obviously, you know, the humpback whale, I don't know, if many of you know or you can guess for how many years has been around, I'll tell you it's 880,000 years. So the humpback whale has been around for all that time. And these fine people of ABB have developed the new propelling system 
that is going to propel our yacht. Now, it's all being inspired from the, from the humpback whale. And you may ask me, what is new? We say nothing, because it was all there. So we are just mimicking the whale tail movement. And this is what it looks like, in an essence. What I want to tell you is that this is very new technology. And if you want to know how new, it was presented on Wednesday to the public. So last Wednesday, 31st of May, it was the first ever presentation of this propelling system that we're going to be using. Do you have some? It's just a 30 seconds. What makes our new propulsion system unique? It is our capability to control each plate individually in real time during each revolution, creating a new standard of hydrodynamic performance. Remember the whale's sensitive connected nerves that optimize beautiful, powerful movement in a similar manner. Our solution is capable of adapting its behavior to the needs of the operator. This technology has the potential to enable extremely high efficiency and precise maneuverability, optimized for different ship types, all shapes, and operational requirements. ABB's combination of competencies in hydrodynamics, mechanical systems, ship electrification, automation and control puts us in a unique position in creating this ingenious integrated solution. Okay, let's go on this one. For easy maintenance and time now you see the applicability for, he speaks for our yacht. One key question, of course, is who are the ones benefiting from this innovation the most? We see tremendous opportunities for passenger vessels such as... This is us. <laughs> as Dynafit offers the efficiency and comfort needed for the future operations. In the energy segment, Dynafit's responsiveness in dynamic positioning offers the one... Okay, let's go through the kinky de details. Uh, I don't know what happened. Put a hold after we do it. Yeah. And so, on the, on the administrative point of view, uh, we were happy to confront the American people. Uh, as we said, it was selected and elected that this boat is, uh, the first placement will be in Manhattan. And uh, speaking of what, we said, okay, why, why it's going to be Manhattan? It's going to be Manhattan because Manhattan, to do otherwise, to put a hotel, you need a cap rack of 800 million. And why do you need a cap rack of 800 million? because this is what it costs. But now, you know, very fast you will come to the conclusion, but wait a minute, I'm not buying the whole cow to just get a bottle of milk. So that's why we brought it down to the price per key, and the price per key equivalence for the 20 keys is around 40, 45 million, which is exactly what we are investing at. So here, let's say, let's go and compare apples to apples, 40 to 40 million. We are there. Now what happens here is that in, after 30 years, the revenue that will be amassed by our project is going to be close to 150 million, and the one from the 20 keys of that hotel to 50 million. That's what makes it exciting. And it does make it exciting because you cannot buy land in the States, in Manhattan. I mean, you cannot buy and be economically viable. Now, I know what comes to mind uh, to all of you. You go, you know, land, land, land. We were brought up by this proverb and axioms that... Uh, land is a good investment and everything else uh, of the rest is like throwing money in the sea or overboard. But for me, to my mind, comes the saying of Gary Keller who said, most people think that buying land is investing, but they're wrong. It doesn't make you an investor any more than buying groceries make you a chef. So I go by that because it suits me, <laughs> but I do. Uh, also to the critics of my time investment, I want to say that, you know, maybe it's those people that lack the courage but uh, if you look around you, uh, the patrons of this yacht club and many other yacht clubs in the world, but especially Greeks, are the ones that prospered and they gave, gave a, an incredible growth to themselves and to their companies just out of doing that, getting money out of the water. So um, I want to just give you a, a little bit of a numbers just to understand, but of course it's not a financial analysis, but this is at the at the mere 30% capacity occupancy rate. I don't have a pointer. Do I have a pointer? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. At the mere 30 percent occupancy, we are breaking even. And at 100 percent occupancy, which is of course a fallacy, we get a 30 percent ROI. And of course, these numbers will be scrutinized too from our investors or the wannabe investors. Um, I kept uh, some numbers for last. This, uh, I have two favorite numbers. One of them is 70%, uh, which is what you're looking at now. This is the part of the globe as it was seen from the side of the Pacific Ocean. So, you know, being that 70% of what we do is water, we better think of investing in water more like the Greek ship owners do. And the uh, last number, which is not the pleasant one, does anybody know what is this? This is a human cell. And the human cells, they age by a percentage of 1% a year. So if you're planning to do something, you better do it fast because <laughs> time flies by. <laughs> um, so this is uh, mostly what I wanted to discuss. Of course, the floor is open for questions and for challenging what I told you in, in, in the auditorium or in private meetings and sessions. And uh, I believe Jean-Pierre wants to add something. Another. I just want to show you another video to, show, to tell you that today we are into this uh, Yacht Club of Greece. Yacht Club of Greece is one of the most famous yacht club also in the world. We know that Greece is focused on ship owners and everything. And the most important yacht club in the world is Monaco Yacht Club. The Monaco Yacht Club is focusing because of Prince Albert on sustainability. And this is very important now because all the ship owners in the world are focusing on sustainability. The reason why we got immediately the authorization in New York, it's because the boat will be the first electric boat hotel in the world. And uh, we had meetings and we had conversation with uh, Mayor Bloomberg, with uh, other investor in, uh, in New York. And I think this, uh, this boat will be a kind of focus. I want to show you also, uh, you can show some yacht clubs I designed. Uh, so, complete, just, you just, know, to, yeah, just, just not to leave an ambiguity, this is the first of many. We have elected the yes. placement to be in Manhattan because it's the highest uh, per square meter capital. But of course, Miami will follow, Geneva will follow, uh, Santa Rosa. Singapore, follow. Hong Kong, the Great Bay in, uh, in, uh, in Asia, in, uh, in China. And I want to show you now the size of the Yacht Club so, in uh, So Jean-Pierre, we have to, we, we can either wrap it up with the video or with questions, but unfortunately we're gonna be here let's, at let's like- Let's see this quick video and sure. after we have Fantastic. questions. Fantastic, well, okay, we, we've really gotta wrap it up. So yeah. we'll do the video yeah. and then we'll move to the next yes, speaker. Yes. Thank you, <laughs> all right. Sometimes has misspelling because it was done in China last night and very fast. This is the Shanghai Yacht Club. Shanghai Yacht Club is not a yacht club where you have a lot of boats. It's not like a sport club. It is a social club. It's one of the largest and the longest building in Shanghai. But we renovated now about seven years ago and it's under the tallest skyscraper in Shanghai. This yacht club is a very important social yacht club because it's, it's, it even overpassed the Hong Kong Yacht Club and now it's affiliated to, to Monaco. So every member of Monaco go to the Shanghai Yacht Club and from the Shanghai Yacht Club they go there. It was very, very contemporary and it's designed with a big aquarium and a very organic design. This has been inaugurated and also we did a huge uh, a campaign for the Yacht Club to come to Monaco even come to Monaco with a lot of celebrities and we have inaugurated this yacht club in, uh, in Shanghai. Uh, you can see that uh, of course the design is organic but very futuristic also and there a lot of people are coming just to talk business. All ambass it's like an ambassador club and uh, now that we have designed it, it has a huge place for events and that's why my little boat will be also a social club a place where people, company can hire it and do social business and do a very high-end uh, um, business like in, in, in Shanghai. Uh, it's very important to have a place for gathering. Look here today, we are one of the most majestic places in Athens. We're surrounded by sea and I don't know if you realize it, but it's, uh, it's amazing. It's like here, we have a deck and uh, those are, are, are photography, they're not rendering. It's the way it looks. So this yacht club is not only uh, uh, a trendy, but it's a must to be member there. At the same time, 
When we designed it, I was called by the president of a yacht club in Beijing, and they asked me to design the yacht club in Beijing that would be a crystal flower on the sacred lake next to Summer Palace. This would be a social yacht club, and you can see that there's a lot of boats around. They are lot electric boats, and every boat is a party boat. You know that Chinese, they like very to, to, to be private for, for party and to socialize. So they will rent next to the yacht club a private boat to go on the sacred lake. And all the members already are paying 1 million RMB, which is about 130 or 40,000 dollars a year to be member. Obviously, the government of Xi Jinping cut out all richness in, in China and didn't want this club to be open very fast. So he wanted to create a new politic. You all know that. So the project is a bit on hold. Thank you. Thank you so much. Listen, it's beautiful. It's, it's beyond beautiful.